Hello everyone. Today we're gonna take a look at the NZXT Manta PC case, so let's get twirling. As soon as the NZXT Manta hit the market, I know I need to get one. It's a beautiful elegant mini ITX case, but not small. First thing you'll notice with this piece is the curvy design for better aerodynamics. But the sides are bulgy for better stability. Wait, this is not a supercar. The frame is built of steel so it feels solid and sturdy, but makes it a bit heavy for a mini ITX case. The side panel consists mostly of glass window which reveals the inside of your case, just like the Audi R8 engine glass cover. Events are beautifully presented in this case, with curvy intake at the front and the top of the case. That just looks like side blades of, again, an Audi R8 car. So snapping off the bonnet or the front panel reveals two 120mm fans and the dust filter. There's enough space for push-pull fan configuration. The case comes with two 120mm fans, but you can replace it with two 140mm fans or up to 280mm radiator. Continuing to the top, there's vent opening running from the rear to the front of the case. Removing the top panel will give you access to the top radiator mount, but the radiator fans are to be mounted outside the frame. They are the same mounts as the front panel, but unfortunately, there is no dust filter. Shame in you NZXT. Having a quick look at the sleek top panel, there is two USB 3 ports, a power button, white LED power strip, and headphone and mic jack. Now moving on to the rear of the case, there is one 20mm exhaust fan, motherboard IO panel, a single switch for lighting control, two expansion slots inserts that can be removed with a thumb screw, and power supply compartment. Now to dig into the inside, you just need to unscrew the thumb screw. They are attached to the side panel so you don't lose them. Looking at the interior, you'll notice they're spacious so water cooling is easy. In fact, you can have up to two liquid cooling, each of the size of 280mm, which is massive for an ITX PC. There is also enough space for CPU cooler, tall up to 160mm. Moving to the bottom of the case, you have a massive power supply chamber that will probably fit a pair of shoes. And beneath that, there is a movable dust filter for the PSU. Now just above the PSU shroud, there is vent opening for better air circulation for the PSU and the GPU that's placed just over it. There is enough clearance for GPU length up to 363mm before you hit the fans at the front of the case. Now just between the front fan and the motherboard you have two mounting trays for SSDs that can be easily removed by unscrewing just one thumb screw for each SSD tray. I was able to mount an NZXT U Plus at one of the trays. Unfortunately SSDs are mounted upside down, makes me wonder if the guy who designed the case was actually drunk. You could also install a 3.5 HDD drive but first you need to remove the SSD trays which is inconvenient. Under the PSU compartment. There's a place to install a second full-size HDD drive or a third SSD, but you'll need to screw it in from the bottom of the case. Now between the SSD and the motherboard there's a cable shroud to hide all your ugly and messy cables from the SSDs and your motherboard. I like the look of the NZXT logo engraved in the shrouds. Now shifting to the other side of the case, we can see the cable management is made easy because of 1. The curvy design so we have so much space for easier cable management. two. There's cable tie slots everywhere to help tidying things up. And three, we get cable cutouts everywhere for easy cable routing. There's even one for the GPU. But sadly, there's no rubber grommet, which is a big lid down. There's a fan hub for astonishing eight fans, which is a lot for a mini ITX build, but a great feature for an enthusiast who would like to provide an adequate cooling for a beast. Finally, you can turn on and off the backlighting and the side panel in ZXT logo. By pressing a switch at the back which cycles through different lighting modes, there is no RGB lighting, but nothing is perfect. So altogether, the NZXC Manta is built for an enthusiast user that requires a lot of room for cooling, overclock activity, quality construction and stupidly easy cable management on a mini ITX machine. But in exchange, this is not a small case, but I wouldn't say it's large and heavy if you compare it to most full tower or mid tower cases. We're seeing more and more beautiful and unique looking mini ITX chases in the market nowadays, and definitely this is one of them. With a price tag of 140 US dollars, it's a pricey case.
Alright guys, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, I'll see you guys later.